Hi, uh, Jeff from Public Lab here, and we're going to go through how to export a map in MapNitter. Uh, first, I, I want to point out that since MapNitter 2, you may not need to export the map. I mean, uh, there's an embed code here. You can copy and paste that into a blog post, and uh, you know you can uh, you know you can use it just digitally. Uh, these load now with many many images, and they're they're higher resolution than they used to be. Um, we're going to add a high res function, so by the time you watch this, there might even be the ability that, you know, when you zoom in, you see the high resolution image instead of a, a preview of it. Uh, that's something we've tested. So, uh, you know, exporting is, is nice because you get a full resolution picture, a JPEG of the whole map. But especially for really big maps, uh, you know, that's a lot of data. And, you know, if you have more than... Uh, 20 or 30 images, you're starting to get to a really big map. And I would I would say consider breaking it into multiple small maps or um, or consider using it uh, just digitally. Um, so, uh, but for those of you who want to, the export function is here. Um, if you've already exported, you might have some export formats available already. These are all the things that it generates. A JPEG, a GeoTIFF, a Todd Map Service, that's actually like a mini Google Maps of your own. It just uh, generates these tiles, which will turn into this sort of, uh, you know, browsable interface. But uh, you may not need to do that. Like I said, this this the th this thing itself will embed normally. Um, but uh, but the Todd Mapper service is used in some APIs uh, and for other services. Um, the OSM style TMS, uh, you know, for OpenStreetMap and uh, a zipped TMS if you're a developer, say, or want to archive it or something like that. Um, and you can also order a print, which I recommend you give it a try um, on, on paper. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, basically you can just start the export. If you um, uh, take a look down here, it'll show you when the last person exported this map, if they ever have before. One thing you might want to do, this is a pretty simple map with just two images. Um, so I can start it, and anytime I can cancel it, and I don't have to leave the window open. It'll run. Uh, no matter what. So, um, and and we're planning on adding a feature where it will email you when it's complete. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but uh, but perhaps by the time you watch this movie, we will have. And now you can see it's going through your images. Um, the advanced options is pretty important, though. It will default to an average resolution. It won't go below f below five centimeters per pixel to try to help you avoid making really, really high resolution maps uh, if you don't necessarily need them. I mean, five centimeters per pixel is already 10 times better than the average Google map, or probably the average Google map for cities. If you include rural areas or whatever, then, then it's, it's even better than that. Um, so it's, it's really quite good. At five centimeters, you can see birds. You can see individual plants. Um, let's say, though, that, that, that you're running it at this at, at five, and you notice it's going pretty slowly. It's not, it's not working uh, or, or just taking too long or whatever. So I canceled it and I could rerun it, but I'm actually going to change the resolution and I'm going to bring it all the way up to 20 centimeters per pixel, which is still more than twice as good as most uh, Google Maps. Um, so I'm going here and then I'm going to rerun the export. And now it's going gonna, it's gonna to downsample these images uh, before it, it attempts to stitch them all together. Um, you know, or to combine them into a single flat image. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, with, this is the most important way that you can make it easier for the for MapNitter to generate your export. One note is if you go too high, it says this right here, then it's going to spend a lot of time resizing your images before it gets to exporting them. And, uh, you know, that's uh, going to potentially take a long time again. So there's sort of a middle ground. Uh, and I would say that if you aim between 5 and 20 centimeters per pixel, you're going to do pretty well. And, and just generally close to the average of your images, but a little bit lower resolution is, is probably a good rule of thumb. It can take a little bit of finessing. So I'm not going to let the, the uh, wait for this to finish, but because uh, you really saw the, what the downloads will look like here, and I'm not going to just sit here forever. But uh, you'll notice that the downloads are no longer available, and that is true. Once you begin an export, it deletes the old exports. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, we may change that in the future if we're able to host many, many copies of exports, but uh, it starts to add up in disk space pretty quickly. So 
That's it. Um, you do have to be logged in uh, to export unless it's an anonymous map, but um, most of you, I think, have publiclab.org accounts. And again, if you have trouble exporting or anything else, you can always go to the grassroots mapping mailing list, or if you really get in trouble or think it's a bug, to the uh, web at publiclab.org uh, support line. So good luck with your exports and your map making, and thanks a lot. This is Jeff Warren again from Public Lab.